this session is now being recorded. And uh, I think I'll hand over to Vanya. Great. Thank you, Darren. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. It's bang on two o'clock, and um, let's get started. So I thought we'd start with a quick introduction to tell you how this webinar came about. So an initiative called Business by Her launched in January this year with Wirecard and the Emerging Payments Association of Africa's founding members. Our mission is women development, and we're creating a forum of influential women that can represent women's interests through a supportive community. We hope to be catalysts to profound change in society, which is why everyone, not only women, are always welcome at our events. At one such event about a month ago, our speed training session addressed personal brand building and highlighted the need for something a little extra. So we've collaborated with Talent in the Cloud to extend the LinkedIn profile optimization to our delegates and anyone who wants to market themselves and their organizations in this digital age. So a little bit more about who the, um, the organizations are that are listed here that you can see. The EPA is the Emerging Payments Association of Africa. And uh, you can see the picture there. Uh, just Lane is on the call as well, or on the webinar as well. Um, the Emerging Payments Association of Africa is the commercial membership association of the payments industry influencers. They have a global footprint across the UK, Asia, and now Africa. And their aim is to be the voice of the payments industry across the globe. They provide a platform for thought leadership conversations, opportunities for innovative collaborations, and knowledge sharing. And then Wirecard is one of the world's fastest growing digital platforms in financial commerce. Our focus is on shaping the future of digital payment distributions. We offer businesses a constantly growing ecosystem of value added services for innovative digital payments online, mobile, and at the point of sale. Wirecard offers a constantly growing range of forward looking technologies and a flexible, customizable service for cashless payments. So why did we collaborate with Talent in the Cloud? They're a leading provider of executive talent to the international fintech sector with specialized focus on emerging markets. They've helped some of the fastest growing fintech companies, including us at Wirecard, to scale across continents by providing access to unrivaled networks of executives. Additionally, they proactively enrich the industry by promoting gender diversity and equality. And now just um, to to introduce Darren Franks, who's our speaker today to lead us through this webinar. He's the CEO and founder of Talent in the Cloud. He has 20 years in international search in Europe, across the Middle East and Africa. He's an advocate of gender diversity and inclusion. He's got 15 years on LinkedIn, 26,000 connections, and he's generated over $5 million in business from LinkedIn. So Darren, over to you. You certainly are the man to lead us through this one. My word, that's some introduction. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I think um, just to put some of that in context, it, it, certainly the, um, the last number there, that sort of $5 million, uh, you know, we, we could probably attribute more revenue, quite honestly, than, than that number. If I look back at the, the 15 years that I've been using LinkedIn, so it, it's way more than a, a social media site. This is a, you know, a, a business um, uh, collaboration and um, tool that will enable you when used properly to, to really extend your uh, your business, your reach, whatever other goals you uh, you set for yourselves. So what we're what we're running through today, uh, brief introductions, which uh, I think Wendy has done, thank you very much. Um, talking through why your LinkedIn is so important. Um, that's very very a very quick slide. Um, a bit about how LinkedIn works and then we get on to how to optimize your profile and do's and don'ts. And we've got some really interesting, um, I, think, I think they are anyway, uh, tips and tricks for you at the, at the end just to make uh, your experience on LinkedIn a little easier because it can be quite noisy and uh, just to really get the most out of LinkedIn. So one thing to think about. In the course of your career, how many people really see your CV? Not many, huh? Now think about how many potential people can see your LinkedIn profile. Now that's quite some scary numbers there if you think about that. Um, I, w I would imagine the average CV probably gets viewed in, in someone's career maybe 100 times, maybe 200 times. Um, you can do that in a couple of hours on LinkedIn. Um, and whilst we're not certainly saying here that your LinkedIn should be a, a copy of your CV, Certainly elements of that should definitely go into your profile. So that's something really important to think about. I'm just going to run through some, some key stats here that I managed to find on, on LinkedIn. Um, 
some of these are really quite insightful. So uh, two professionals join LinkedIn every second. 45% of LinkedIn users are in upper management. 57% of LinkedIn users on mobile. Please keep that in mind. Um, whatever we're going to cover today, it's really important that you cross-reference and you cross-check your profile in terms of how it appears, both imagery, text, the structure. 57% um, of LinkedIn uses on mobile, really important. Um, over 2 million posts a day, um, and we wonder why LinkedIn is so noisy. 94% uh, of B2B marketers use social media to publish content. 91% uh, of executives rate LinkedIn as their first choice of, uh, for content and 80% of B2B leads generated on social media. And then when we look at um, the number of registered users on LinkedIn, I don't think this really tells the whole story. So the 610 million registered members as of March of this year, um, but uh, an interesting stuff I got from, uh, actually from someone at LinkedIn, who uh, name I cannot give out, 43% um, of LinkedIn users are inactive. So that means that, um, uh, 43% uh, are not logging into LinkedIn on a, uh, on a consecutive basis in every six months. So it's a six month rolling period. 43% of people only check it maybe twice a year. So if, please don't rely just on LinkedIn for uh, whatever uses you're, you, you're intending to use it for, which we'll come on to shortly. Um, it is a tool, one tool, and part of your wider business development, job search, and research strategy. So um, LinkedIn, um, what, what, what do we use it for? And before we even begin to think about connecting to people and sending out messages and uh, building networks, um, when you're looking at your profile, your profile is not about you. It's about your audience. That's really, really important. It's, it's marketing 101. Um, you know, whatever content you write needs to be digestible and relevant to the audience who you're hoping to connect with. So yes, you can talk about your services and your products and your background. Um, don't make it too salesy. Um, we'll come into more detail in a bit, but this is not about you. Um, this is about what you can offer and why someone should connect with you. Remember, 610 was million users. You need to stand out. So what are you going to use LinkedIn for? Um, now, obviously, there, there, there are numerous things. Um, it's you know, a very, very busy place for, for recruiters like us to go and find people like you. So, you know, looking for a job is, is one thing, or being found for a job. Um, developing partnerships, you might want to use LinkedIn for business development. You might want to use it to raise funding. Uh, you might want to use it for research. You might even want to use LinkedIn to raise your profile to be a speaker. Um, the amount of times I have conversations with people when they say, oh, I'm, I'm looking to build my network. What does that mean? What are you, what are you looking for? To get out of that, you need to have an end goal in mind. If you don't, you're just you, know, you may as well just be on Twitter or uh, not even Facebook, um, because you need you know, LinkedIn is so super targeted. The amount of data available within LinkedIn um, is, is a marketer's dream uh, and a recruiter's dream as well. Um, hence why we're doing this webinar to try and uh, help you guys uh, uh, build your profile so you can find it a bit easier. But uh, just you have to have a purpose in mind. Now, it doesn't have to be one. So you could be looking at um, being a speaker as well as doing business development. That's fine. You could be looking at raising funds as well as um, doing research. That's no issue at all. But you just need to really be clear about what you're looking to get out of something. So before we get into the, the, the good stuff, um, it's always good to get a, a measure of, of where you are in LinkedIn terms. So LinkedIn has something called the Social Selling Index. If you just Google that and you type in Social Selling Index and LinkedIn, uh, you a couple of clicks and you'll get a bit of a dashboard that looks like this. Um, it's, it's useful. I wouldn't get too hung up on this. Um, Obviously, LinkedIn is a, is a commercial business um, and a, a very profitable one at that. And you know they're never going to say you want to score 100 out of 100 because they're obviously keen for you to uh, subscribe and pay uh, subscription charges. But it's a very good benchmark. Um, so if, before you make any changes, have a quick look. So Google Social Selling Index LinkedIn um, and get your score. 
And there's some other interesting stats on there as well that you can sort of see where you rank in your network and what have you. But this is the one to look at. And as you can see, they've broken it down into four sections. Uh, establish your personal brand, find the right people, engage with insights and build relationships. Now, unfortunately, LinkedIn don't publish their algorithms. Um, they don't tell us how um, they quantify your professional brand or how they quantify, you know, how you engage with insights other than sort of clicks and likes and what have you. Um, so a bit of it's trial and error, but it would be really good if you took a, a snapshot now, put a note in your diary to check it in four weeks' time. That's obviously assuming uh, you, make, you make some changes and see how that increases or, or decreases, hopefully not, um, over the next couple of months. LinkedIn is not a quick fix. Um, you can't just go and build a connection of, you know, a connection base of 5,000 people overnight. Um, you can't become a, uh, a social influencer uh, overnight. All these things take time. So the more you put in, the more you get out. Now, before we start looking at your profile, you need to understand a bit more about the people you're trying to connect with. What's in it for them? Who are they? How are they going to find you? Why should they find you? Or why, if you find them, why should they connect with you? So again, kind of going back to uh, a sort of marketing school, um, let's build personas. Now, you can have multiple personas. That's no issue at all. Um, there are some really, really great tools online, completely free. Uh, I would recommend the HubSpot. So if you type in uh, persona and HubSpot, uh, you will see there's a, there's a link, uh, you can download some documents, and you can go and fill in your persona types. What's great about this is it, it puts you in the mind of the person or the people that you're trying to connect with. So the more information you can fill in here, the better the outcome will be and the more targeted your approach will. Um, we will also use this a bit later on when it comes to building your network. But again, when it comes to positioning your network, building your profile, it's really, really important to do this. Have three, four, five, it doesn't, I wouldn't say more than five, but um, uh, what the idea here is, is to, to really understand what the average, in this case, the CMO, what, what are their typical interests? Um, where do they spend their time socially? Um, what are their pain points? What's their, uh, their general persona? Maybe it be gender, maybe it be age, uh, it could be pr pretty much anything. And when you start to uncover what the persona is, you'll start to realize that actually, if I'm going to build my profile and I want this person to be able to connect with me, take it seriously, et cetera, et cetera, um, you need to mirror a, a little bit of, the, of this as well. It's kind of virtual NLP uh, for those uh, HR practitioners out there or anyone that's uh, studied NLP. Uh, it's, it's mirror and match, and it, it applies exactly the same on, on LinkedIn or really any sort of marketing that you do. Now we're going to jump into the profile. I appreciate I'm, I'm going through this quite quickly. I didn't realize it was, uh, we were only 13 minutes in. Um, <laughs> uh, hopefully uh, we've got some, uh, we we'll certainly have some time for us in Q&A at the end. Um, I might pick a few questions as we go, actually. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, what was that persona and HubSpot? Uh, from Joy. Uh, Joy Marie, hi. Um, so if you go to, actually, let's see if we can get it up now as we're on, we do this live. Let's have a look. Um, it's HubSpot. Um, persona template. There we go. This is the one. So this is a great tool. Um, even in, not necessarily just for LinkedIn, but uh, you know, if you're in sales or marketing, um, recruitment, um, this is really good to be able to understand what your personas are. Um, here we go. One is five percent. Take my build my personas, and then you just go through this process. So this might be personal. I'm looking for. And it's a CMO. And then we start going through this process. And it will ask you numerous questions. And at the end, you'll get a really nice looking PDF. So I hope that answers your question there. Perfect. So um, let's go dive into to, to LinkedIn. Um, I'm not just going to use my profile through this, uh, but I thought I'd, I'd just take a few screenshots uh, and summarize some of the key elements we'll, we'll pop over to LinkedIn and uh, have a look at some of the other profiles shortly. But, you know, if, when you are planning your profile, you don't have to fill every single element in. There are various different modules that you can um, choose to leave out or include, whatever it may be. But the core ones and the really critical ones are your headline, is your about us, which is, sorry, which is, uh, yeah, sorry, it's here, just 
under that bit here where you can put some content. Um, any articles, and we'll cover that back in a minute in terms of, you know, is it a good thing to do that or not? Um, and then your experience. Lastly, skills. Uh, again, if you're, if you're kind of searching for, you're using anything as a job search, that's really good. Uh, the way that this works, just to give you a bit of insight, uh, a number of companies use something called a, a, an ATS, an applicant tracking system. Um, some of the enterprise grade ATSs are integrated within LinkedIn. And when someone posts a job or does a search, it has, doesn't actually search your profile, it searches your skills and it will match you based on your skills. If you've ever looked at a job on LinkedIn and it says, you know, you rank in the top 20% of people that have applied, it's looking at your skills and a little bit about your experience. So do add that section. Um, it, it, it's pretty good for SEO as well. Um, and the last bit is, is recommendations. Uh, we'll, we'll, again, we'll come back to that bit because it's very important. Uh, I've got a question here. So it's individual focus. What about company focus? Um, that must be about the personas. Uh, so yeah, well, you can build a, uh, a profile of the types of organizations you're looking to work with or looking to engage with, but ultimately LinkedIn is is a one to one networking tool. Um, this is not about engaging with a brand. Yes, you can follow their company page, you can um, uh, like some of their content or, or what have you, but ultimately it's about getting to that person. So you may say, right, here are the you know I, I want to work with all the um, construction companies in Joburg, for example. Um, here's a list of the top three hundred. Well, that's great, but what are you going to do with that, and who do you need to speak to there? Um, these companies may 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 employ ten people, ten thousand people. Um, again, you need to be very clear on, on who you're looking to um, to engage with. Uh, typically, once you've been through that sort of persona building, you'll you'll start seeing that there are there's lots of commonality between um, uh, the individuals that you're looking to uh, connect with. So, I hope that answers that question. Right, summary and pictures. Um, okay, big, big thing here. Um, there are 610, or whatever the number was, 620 million users of, or million profiles on LinkedIn. You need to stand out. Um, the only way really of doing that is by content. And I'm talking about your visual content when you first go into someone's uh, LinkedIn profile. Depending on what you do and who you're looking to approach, um, depends on really the, the type of pictures, the type of imagery that you have. Um, when it comes to the, the headshot, it should definitely be a headshot, not, um, you know, a, a picture with you, uh, I don't know, um, uh, in the garden with the kids or, um, I don't know, on top of Table Mountain or, or whatever it may be. This is a professional networking site. Um, and whilst I've certainly done some this, you know, people do um, uh, judge a book on its cover. And unfortunately, that, that's the world we live in. Uh, you know, there's so much noise, there's so much data. People will flick. You have to have a picture. I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, people will overlook you. They won't think it's, uh, they may not think it's a legitimate profile. And ultimately, it's about social proof. Um, you've probably read a lot about this, uh, or seen a lot about this. People want some, some, um, conf uh, confidence that you are an expert in your market or your trade or your sector or whatever it may be. The only way to really do that visually is with, with images. So, uh, you, you'll see on mine, you know, a picture of where I was on hosting a panel. Um, quite a, you know, we chose this this profile, or chose this picture from having quite a quite, quite a few others. We just felt um, we kind of let lent it up quite well to my approach and uh, what we're looking to do. Um, the second thing here um, at the top, you'll see that there's a LinkedIn URL, so you can customize this. Why would you want to do that? Well, a couple of things. Um, one, it's really good for SEO. LinkedIn, uh, apparently, so my sources tell me, uh, do give extra sort of rankings or, or attribute certain uh, points and scores to having a uh, distinct URL. I'm going to show you how to do that a bit, bit later on. Um, also, if you are using your LinkedIn profile and you're putting it on other content, maybe your CV, maybe you're putting it on a blog, maybe you're putting it elsewhere. It just looks nicer if you've got a clean URL like that rather than a load of digits and, and, um, and letters in there. So please do do that. Uh, and lastly, on this bit here, it's this is the most important part of your LinkedIn profile, the headline. That needs to be very, very clear on who you are and what you do. 
Um, now, we, 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 we use these things called pipes, um, just to split the words up, um, find them on your keyboard, and which keyboard you have. Um, but again, it's, it, it, it's about ramming home that message. What, who are you? What do you do? And why would someone want to connect with you? So if I send a, a request to, uh, I don't know, a CEO of a fintech business in somewhere, um, say Africa, somewhere in Africa, um, the chances are they're probably going to accept my uh, my, my invite. Um, yes, I'm, I'm going to write the message, and again, we'll talk about that shortly, but uh, it's about social proof. You know, do I, am I who I say I am? Um, do I have a background? Do I have any sort of um, recommendations, endorsements, etc.? cetera? Um, and the last bit here is about articles. So I'm on the fence a little bit on this one, and I'll, I'll talk to you about that. We might as well do that now. Um, articles on LinkedIn. When you write an article, and I've, I've spent many, many hours writing articles. Um, you know, I've actually spent money on getting ghostwriters. We publish it on, uh, on on LinkedIn. You get all excited, and it gets like 10 views or three likes or something. You can sit there and go, what a waste of time that was. Then I'll, uh, I'll write a status update. Um, I did one last week, actually, a status update, and it had 10,500 views, 400 likes, and 60-odd comments. Um, that took me about 20 seconds, whereas the article took me <laughs> hours and actually spent money on it as well. So, you know, is, is there, you know should you be producing articles? Um, what sort of content should you be, be producing? Um, I do have a view on this. Uh, this is not a LinkedIn view. This is a personal view. I think you should definitely have two or three evergreen content articles. And what I mean by that is content that is not going to get old. So, for example, uh, in our in our world, we, we we do a lot in diversity and inclusion. We also uh, talk to a lot of clients about uh, data privacy and GDPR and the Poppy Act. So I've got uh, a, an article that sits on my profile, which is uh, all about GDPR, and that just sits there. That's not going to change. Uh, that's what people see when they come onto my profile, and that's fine. Um, perhaps if we spent a lot more time, a lot more money. Uh, advertising, uh, writing articles and, uh, sort of making clever links and what have you, we might get a few more views. But, uh, generally speaking, the, the updates get more traction. Right. Now I'm going to do a live critique. Um, I'm actually going to use Daniel's profile, uh, with her permission, I should ask. Um, and, uh, we do a bit of a critique on, on, on hers, uh, live. So, Daniel, please forgive me if I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be rude, I promise. Um, I'm going to be constructive. I hope, I hope that's okay. Totally cool, thanks. Awesome. Okay, good stuff. So, I made some notes because I'm not, I'm not doing this uh, avenue. So, first things first. Um, but, um, really important, I think you need a background image. Now, obviously, I know you work at Wirecard. Um, you know, you guys have got some amazing content. You've got some fantastic images because you've sent me quite a few of them over the last couple of years. Um, you know, your, your, um, your goal here, correct me if I'm wrong, but is is to recruit and to build um, the Wirecard brand and, and and hire talent into Wirecard here in South Africa. Is, is that correct? That's right. Okay, great. So well, my recommendation would be a, a really nice team photo, um, maybe a photo of the offices, maybe a photo of you guys on one of your away days, a conference, wherever it may be, but just something that that shows the brand. Uh, that's really really important. Whilst we're talking about the brand as well, what I've noticed is uh, your company is, is Wirecard Africa Holdings Pty Limited. Now, I'm sure that's probably the, the legal name for Wirecard here in South Africa, but if I click on this, I'll show you what happens. There's only two employees at Wirecard. Okay, so what I would do in this case is I would link all your profiles and definitely all your staff's profiles back to um so you can navigate back back to um wire card. Now you can mention within your sorry, it's not navigating it again. As you can certainly mention within the text here that you know wire card brackets, wire card Africa holdings PTY limited, et cetera, et cetera. But you definitely need to associate this to the wire card group and the wire card company pages. Um, same with the previous role as well. And if these guys are still in operation, then it, it's always good to link it directly to the company. Okay. 
A um, couple other things as well, Vanya. Yeah, um, the hunt is on for great talent. Um, look, I, I know what you do. Um, that's because you and I know each other. But um, I'm not sure that really tells anyone else what you're looking for. What What is great talent? Are you looking for software developers? Are you looking for engineers? Are you looking for uh, salespeople, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Um, and whilst it may be broad, one day you're looking at developers and the next day you're looking at uh, you know a, a sales consultant or whatever it may be, um, I think you could probably flush that out a little bit more. You know, we're building. Uh, why I can't in South Africa or in Africa to do X, Y, Z, and we look for um, top talent in these areas. Uh, okay. LinkedIn works on keywords, and we'll come into how LinkedIn works a little bit later on, just in terms of the structure. So the more you have in there, for example, if you're looking for software developers, you need to put into your profile, you know, the hunt is on for great software developers or great architects or, or whatever it may be. Um, I think the... If we scroll down a little bit further when we talk about your experience, this is this talks about Wirecard. So this is what Wirecard is. Okay, and, that, that, and that's fine, but I can get that from clicking on the Wirecard logo. What I don't know is what you do. I don't know much yeah. about what your role is at Wirecard. Um, I don't know much about actually if I'm coming into the market and I don't know who Wirecard is because uh, you know you, you guys only recently to change or re rebranded as Wirecard prior, prior to being you know my gate. So people don't. Really recognize that or many, many people won't recognize that name so you can be quite descriptive there i personally wouldn't use the, the sort of corporate spill um i would make it a little bit more uh engaging i think corporate can be a little bit dull no no no, no offense um <laughs> but i think um I, 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 you know, this is your profile just because you're working at one card um you know the, this is you as an individual so I, I would use that opportunity or this opportunity here to to beef up a little bit more about you know who is Wirecard? What are the, what's the culture? Um, you can put pictures in here as well. You know, you, you can really create the, the employer brand from your profile. Um, and I think once you've done that, and you know, if you have other colleagues in the business as well who can take snippets of that, maybe slightly adapt it, maybe, you know, Shelley or Hanley can do the same. Um, and all of a sudden, you start to build up a bit more, um, credibility is not the right word, but a bit more um, recognition in the market of who Wirecard is. Stunning. Okay. Um, did notice that there uh, weren't any articles um, that you've published. And uh, again, based on my, my sort of previous uh, comment, uh, I think it's important to have a, a couple of things. But I, I certainly wouldn't spend hours and hours, you know, messing around with, uh, with, with fancy content. But uh, again, you know, you can use this as part of your employer branding. So if you have videos any of your events or from any of your team shots or, or, or the rebrand, the relaunch, um, sorry, the rebrand re a few weeks ago, any really nice pictures from that, I, I would include that. You know, people are very visual, they like to see things. Um, if you can put that into your profile, I think that would help massively. Awesome. And last but by no means least, um, I think you should definitely get some uh, recommendations on here as well. It certainly helps. And these recommendations can be a multitude of things. They could be uh, colleagues. They could be um, previous uh, customers, if there was, if that applied. Um, or I think if I was, again, yourself, Anya, your, um, you know, who have I recruited at Wirecard? And, you know, what was their experience? And what were they going to say? something nice about me um, and something nice about the process or about the company or about why they joined. You know, again, you can use this as, a, as an employer branding um, tool as well. So I would be inclined to connect with some other people um, within the business who you've had, uh, you know, you've influenced or you've even had them joining on to, uh, to, to Wirecard and getting some references from them in terms of the process and how it was handled. Again, it's, it's really, you know, someone, someone that's interested in looking at Wirecard as a potential uh, employer um, can come on and, and, and look through and go, oh, wow, okay, there's 20 people that have joined Wirecard in the last six months, 12 months, and this is what they've got to say about the business. It, again, it just adds that social proof. Brilliant. Thank you. That's great advice. That's my, that's my critique over. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we're still friends after that. <laughs> we're still friends, Dan. Oh, good. Oh, that's good. Stuff. Oh, a couple of questions that popped through, actually. Um, when describing what you do, should you use I or a third-party language? Great question. Um, again, personally, this is my profile. It's about me. 
I would always use it as, as the first, first person. So I've done this, I do this. I think if you write it as, uh, you know, Baron did X, Y, Z, or Banya did X, Y, Z, um, it looks like it's been, it's been written for you. Um, and that's not, uh, I'm on the front, I think people would argue one way or another on this one, but personally, my personal preference, it should be in the first person, definitely. Great. Um, I'm going to flip back to, uh, where we're up to. So let's go back to searching and connecting. So we use the, the persona, we've built these personas, which is great. So we've got an understanding of who our target audience is. How do we then go and find them on LinkedIn? Um, so there's a number of things we do, but the key thing is how to build the keywords. LinkedIn works by keyword searching. Um, however fancy they say their algorithms are, it's keyword searching. So what do we do? We take their job title as the first thing. That's a, it's a really good way of filtering and um, condensing what you're looking for. So let's have a look at a chief marketing officer. Now, a chief marketing officer is not necessarily just going to be called a chief marketing officer. They could be a marketing director. They could be head of marketing. They could be CMO. Um, they could be, I don't know, head of growth or VP of growth. There are so many different connotations. So it's important to build those in. Um, don't get too carried away with those, but you know, let's build out some strings. So again, uh, maybe, maybe set a, a small spreadsheet, put in job title. What are the job titles we're looking for? Then let's have a look at some of the keywords people are using. Um, so, you know, the, the, this lady here, for example, you know, um, it's on a marketing investment, um, CRM, applications, funnels, conversions, demand generation, all of these these elements are, are real keywords are really, really important. Not, you know, if you just rely on searching for someone's job title, um, you know, a, a, a chief marketing officer in a 10 person company is very, very different from a chief marketing officer in a 10,000 people company. So you need to be looking at other keywords as well. And um, we'll show you how to do some filtering and, and what have you shortly. Um, so once you've got your keywords, I, I would definitely put those into some sort of spreadsheet just so you've got that and it's easily accessible. Um, and then you can start playing around with how to search on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn uses what's called a Boolean search. Boolean is, is, is a fancy way of saying it's a search string. It's ands, ors, nots, and buts. Okay, um, you can get really clever with this. However, it does depend on what uh, LinkedIn subscription you have. Um, that will determine how many results you get back and how in depth you can search. Uh, again, if we wind back to what, what's the reasons that you want to use LinkedIn for, if you're passive, and I, I can't imagine anyone is on this call, otherwise you wouldn't be spending an hour of your lives you know, listening to me drone on for <laughs> today. So I'm hoping everyone on this call really is, is kind of embracing LinkedIn and uh, want, wants to promote themselves in some way, shape or form. You know, is it, is it worth the investment to a premium subscription? I definitely think so. Um, I, I can't remember the, the cost in round, but, uh, you know, the basic one is very basic. It's not going to give you that many search um, uh, results and the way that you can search is going to be again quite limited. Um, but I'm going to dive straight in to show you how the uh, how the search thing works. So um, I did one a bit earlier. Here we go. So let's just run this search. Uh, so I'm looking for someone in the payments or remittances industry. So I'm going to click search, and you can see there I've put this in brackets because I'm looking for payments or and the or and the and and the not has to be in capital letters. Very important. And remittances. So now it's brought me up a whole load of what looks like noise, and I can't really work out what this is. But I'm going to click on people because that's what I'm looking for here. Now, I've got 3.476 million people. Sorry, I sounded like a, a former president there for a minute. But uh, 3.4 million people um, uh, who have come up in that search, and that's way, way, way too broad. So I'm going to uh, filter this a little bit more. So let's have a look. I just want to find everyone in Joburg. Payments or remittances. There we are, 42,000. Now, that's still a lot, quite frankly. Um, so I think I'm going to filter this a bit more, and I'm going to say that I don't want anyone from, uh, let's say, ABSA or Headbank. Okay. Uh, actually, sorry, I need to put these into 
quotations. Thirty-nine thousand. Okay, now that's still a big, big number. So I'm going to filter this even more. So if you click on all filters, and you can then filter based on what level of connection they are, who their connections of, locations again, industries, past companies. Now you need to be a bit careful here. Um, the reason I say that is because I might be looking for someone that is in human resources, as an example, were working in the payments or the sector. Now, I don't know whether they're going to call themselves or mark themselves down as being in financial services because they work in banking or they work in payments, or they're going to be in human resources because that's their trade. I would be very, very careful about using some of these filters because they're not overly accurate. Um, it's always better off to use um, the Boolean searching like I've done up here. But what you can also do is use that Boolean logic on this bit at the bottom. This is quite hidden from, with, with LinkedIn. So I can look for um, CEO or I don't know, CFO. Let's have a look. There we go. I've got 529 results. So that's really good. That gives me a much more manageable list to go through. So that's how some of the searching works um, on, on LinkedIn. Uh, I don't know if anyone's got any questions or wants me to run through any of that in a bit more detail. That is, um, uh, you know, that th there are long courses for months that train you on how to do really in both searching and x-ray searching and all other sort of clever stuff. Um, this is really a <laughs> very quick and dirty overview on, uh, on how to search on LinkedIn. No, no questions coming through. Okay, great. So, now we get to the good stuff. We've worked out, we've done our profile, or we've optimized our profile. We've built a persona in terms of how many, um, sorry, in terms of who we're looking to connect with. We now want to reach out to people. So we've done our search, we've got our, our, our long list of, of people. What do we do now? A few things. First of all, don't just click send a request unless you know that person. Give them a reason. Um, you know, people, I don't, know, I don't know what the average sort of number is, but I mean, I probably get 50, 60 requests a day. Um, most I ignore um, because they haven't written to me. They haven't told me what they want to talk to me about. Um, you know, LinkedIn has a cap, by the way, just if, if anyone's got uh, a, a large number of connections. LinkedIn has a cap at 30,000. 30,000 connections. After that, you can't do anything. Um, so I spend <laughs> a few hours uh, a week going through and deleting people that you know I sort of connected to 15 years ago and um, uh, aren't relevant to what I do now. So make sure you send a note. Now, what that note should be um, really again depends on your persona. Depends what you're looking to do. You know, please don't send someone a, a, a request saying I'm looking for a job. Don't do that. Please don't send someone a request saying I'm looking to sell something to you. It's not going to work. You need to, you need to get into their mindset. Why should that person connect with you? What's in it for them? Um, you know, and again, don't sell. Please, please, please don't sell. Um, you know, a, a, a connection request is, uh, uh, a bit like a first date. Um, certain things you don't do on a first date and, uh, you know, selling on LinkedIn, you definitely don't do that first. So make it friendly, make it engaging, uh, give people a reason to want to connect with you. Feel free to, to name drop. You know, I see you're connected to Vanyard, and I'd really like to connect with you as well. It looks like we've got some mutual connections, or we operate in the uh, in the same sector. Um, I'd like to invite you to join my network. Something like that. It's you know, when you open your LinkedIn, you've got a lot of requests coming through. Connection, connection, connection. It's just noise. Um, you know, uh, again, uh, I'd encourage you not to accept every invite that you get. Um, make sure people have a reason to connect with you. Um, the other thing is that don't breach LinkedIn's guidelines for connection requests. Now, they keep changing this. Um, they're massively pushing, you know, build your network, build your network, but um, they do have a cap on it. So you can't send out, I think, I think from memory, it's 300, um, 300 requests, live requests. So what happens is you go into LinkedIn, you send out requests. Um, when you get to 300 and you want to start sending some more, you're going to get an alert saying you can't connect to anyone else without having their email address. You don't want that to happen. Um, it's a pain to get unlocked and defeats the object of having LinkedIn. So what's important to do is when you go into it, so I can show you here. Um, 
If I go into my, I think it's my network. Here we go, invitations. If I click on invitations and see all, I believe. Uh, no, I've got to find it now. So I usually do this on my phone. It's, it's actually easier to do this bit on your phone than um, on the PC. I can't think where it is. Um, connection requests. I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll remember this at some point. But um, uh, it's really important to yeah to remove the connections. It's going to drive me mad now. Uh, show more. Oh, I think it's here. No, we didn't change it again. Who knows? I'll uh, I'll come back to you on that one. But um, uh, there's a way of, of looking at the invitations that you've sent and removing those invitations. It's really important just to do a bit of housekeeping on LinkedIn. Um, they seem to get funny about that. Um, and then track your acceptance rates and tweak. So what I mean by that is, look, LinkedIn's great, but what it's really not good at is giving you analytics on a personal level. It's good for company analytics, um, but personal, it, it, it's not. There's a few tools out there that claim to be able to give you the analytics based on people that have viewed your profile and this and that. Um, I personally not seen one that, that works yet. So um, try and track it. I've got, uh, I've got a way of doing that, which I'm going to come to right at the very end, um, which I think is going to save you a huge amount of time and really um, allow you to sort of uh, uh, 10x your connections on LinkedIn. Okay. The next bit. Cool. Sorry, tips and tricks. Okay. Oh, sorry, my uh, slides. Here we go. So, first things first, make sure your profile's public. Now, there's a bit of a hidden setting in, uh, in, in LinkedIn. So, if you go to your profile and you click up here, top right, edit public profile and URL, it brings up another page. And you'll see here, this is your public profile. This is what it looks like on the web. And people find you on Google, this is what it looks like. On the right hand side here, your profile public visibility. Make sure that's on. If it's off, you will not get found. Um, again, you can choose who sees your profile, your, your photo. Um, if you want to make all this public or private, uh, again, I Personally, nothing to hide, and I use LinkedIn as a, as, a, as a huge tool for my business. I'm happy for people to see everything. Um, uh, I'm not really worried about data protection. Um, I've got nothing really to protect. So if people want to uh, scrape my data or whatever they want to do with it, that's fine. I, I, you know, I don't share my email addresses, um, but that's regularly available online. So just make sure your profile is 100% visible. Otherwise, you will never get found. Secondly, Spend at least 15 minutes a day being socially active. Now, what does that mean? That means liking content from people that you're... There's no point you going onto LinkedIn and liking posts and content from people that um, are completely relevant to your network. This is a little bit... I, I come back to a bit like dating. It's a bit like courting, uh, as my uh, my grandparents would, would, would say. You know, you, you need to, to warm people up. Um, you need to be front of mind. So I'm not saying that every time the one person you're looking to engage with posts an article and you start commenting and liking, that's overkill. Just to be um, um, sensible, I think that's the best word, you're sensible about it. So yes, yeah, yeah, track your key people, follow the key people that you really want to connect with or do business with or work with or whatever it may be, and start getting engaged with their content, share their content. Because if you share a post or you share a, an update, whatever it may be, they get a notification. They get a notification in their inbox saying, Dan Franks has just shared your profile. Now, it might not mean anything to them, and they might not care about that, and that's fine. The thing is, you're, what you're doing is you're constantly um, reaffirming, repositioning um, how you as an individual, so you're front of mind, and that's really, really important. That's one of the key benefits of LinkedIn, is you can be front of mind to many, many, many thousands, and tens of thousands of people um, pretty much sitting at your desk. Secondly, we will, sorry, thirdly, uh, I did mention to Vanya about getting references. Um, it's really important, guys, um, you know, to get people to endorse who you are and what you do and the job that you've done or the project that you've delivered or the sales that you've made or, I don't know, the, the confidence that you've spoken at, whatever it may be, 
you know, make sure that you A, ask the person for a reference, but B, don't just get references for the sake of it. There's no point getting a reference from perhaps peers um, or, you know, uh, I don't know, friends and family. That's, you know, don't do that. Um, this is a professional site. So make sure that the, the quality of reference you're getting is at the, the, you know, the, 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 the most senior you can. So what we spend a lot of time here is looking at who are, who are key influencers in the market. Now, if I can get a reference from a key influencer in the fintech sector or the payment sector, whatever it may be, that's going to be way more valuable to me than having someone in the construction industry saying, hey, I'm a great guy, um, because that adds no benefit to my profile. What you can also do on, on, on LinkedIn as well is reorder how you're... Where are they? Uh, it's right at the bottom. Uh, actually, is you can reorder your recommendations. So the top two are always visible. So make sure that you know the top two are there. If someone wants to see more, they can. They can just click down and they can see them all here. So that's really important. Now, something I mentioned at the event, uh, the Breakfast by Her event a couple of weeks ago, which was, you know, we do a lot of gender uh, diversity and inclusion. Um, uh, LinkedIn being a US company, that there's certain things they can't or they won't allow you to filter on. Gender is one of those things. So how do we get around that? So if we're looking for um, females operating perhaps in the payment sector, um, how do we find them? Okay, aside from all the other tools we use, but you know, there's, there's a really easy way of doing that. Now, if, if Vanya, for example, if she's got your profile and um, someone's talking about, you, know, you talk about, I don't know, your, your, your kids, or you talk about being you know, a, a working mom or whatever it may be, if you can put them into your profile, people like us can find you. Um, you know, it, it, it's very difficult uh, in the world that we live in today to run searches on a name. Um, you know, and uh, it, it's virtually impossible. So, how, how do we how do we find it based on gender? Uh, uh, you know, I'm not condoning that uh, woman you are, but uh, you know, when we do get requirements from clients, and you know, they're asking us, would you be like a female for this role? How do we get to that, those emails quicker? Um, so if you do add some of these uh, connotations into your CV, uh, sorry, if you your LinkedIn profile, uh, it, it, it certainly helps getting found. And that's what all this is about, getting found. Um, secondly, go and have a chat with uh, your marketing department or uh, your marketing team and ask them about A-B testing. It's really, really important. Uh, when you're sending out those connection link requests, like I just went through, um, Try different ones. See what converts. If I'm sending out 50 today, or let's make it easy, sending out 100 today with one message, and I'm going to give it three days, and I'm going to see how many replies there are. I might get a 60%. Okay, so, so 60 out of 100 people that I sent a request to have accepted. That's pretty good. What if I tweak that invite, that template, and I sent it to another 100 people, and all of a sudden 75 people accept it? I'm going to start using that template, and so on and so on. It's iterative. It's going to keep changing. So please do do that. Keep keep a track of the type, types of connection requests you're sending out. Um, and the ones that are converting, reuse them. Um, when, when you are tagging people, or sorry, when you are posting content or you see something that looks really interesting that you think would be of interest to the wider community or the wider network, tag people in your posts. Number of reasons, again, you're front of mind. And secondly, you know, if, if I'm posting an article, for example, well, not an article, but I'm posting an update about something happening in gender diversity, there are certain people I will tag because, A, I know it's of massive interest to them, but B, I know they'll reshare it and it will go to a much, much wider network. Um, you know, a couple of posts we, we've put on over the last, you know, year or so have gone, you know, ridiculously viral. Um, we, we're talking upwards of, you know, 300,000 views. Um, and you know we, we, we've actually monetized some of that as well, which has been quite amazing. And that's because we've been able to tag people, and because we've gone effectively viral with uh, with, with some of the content. So tag people, um, ask questions. This is not just about liking stuff. Um, a like doesn't really mean much. Uh, it, it, it's more about commenting, even if it's. Uh, sorry, I'm. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking about what I'm about to say here, because if you've seen on LinkedIn, when someone starts a new job, it automatically pops up and you can say, you know, congrats, congrats on your new role. And it's just kind of, uh, they claim AI is doing that. I'm, I'm not quite sure how much AI is involved 
on, on, on that side of, of what LinkedIn do. But, you know, you can just click and say, yeah, congrats, congrats. Make it a bit more personal, you know. Put the name in there. Hey, hey, Steve, you know, congrats on your roles. It looks really exciting. All the best. There you go. Done. Um, again, you're more likely to get a response from someone rather than just seeing a load of people just clicking the button saying, congrats on your new job, congrats on your new job. Um, more you put in, more you get out. Um, and lastly, it's about, you know, LinkedIn is great. LinkedIn will get you so far in a relationship, but you're not going to do direct business on LinkedIn. Someone's not going to buy something from you on LinkedIn. Uh, unless you're sort of a, a SaaS company where someone can subscribe easily or, uh, or what have you. But uh, most of the people on this call haven't looked through people's backgrounds. We're all in professional services and enterprise, et cetera. You know, deals aren't done over LinkedIn. Relationships are formed over LinkedIn. So the idea is to, to move that relationship through a process and get that um, uh, connection to the point of an email or a meeting or a webinar or whatever it may be. Now, lastly, what LinkedIn is great at is being able to connect. What it's terrible at is being able to keep track. Uh, when you get to a certain sort of size of network, it's really, really difficult to make any sense of anything. Um, many, many years ago, before uh, some sort of GDPR and Poppy and Microsoft came along to LinkedIn, um, you were able to go into your connections, you were able to download everything into a CSV, and get everything, email addresses of people you've connected to, um, work history, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when you try and do that, the only thing you get is the name, the company and the job title. That is the only information that LinkedIn will give you. If you want to start getting email addresses, you have to do it manually. Caveat that by saying that there are some uh, automation tools on the market that you can, by all means, try. Please just be very, very careful. If you use an automation tool and um, it's not one that um, uh, LinkedIn can find, then, then, that's, then that's okay. But be careful. Uh, if LinkedIn work out that you're using a plugin or a tool or what have you, they will lock your account and shut you down. As simple as that. So please don't try and um, circumnavigate this process of building your network. It does take time. What you put in is what you get out. So what it's great at is connecting. What it's terrible at is being able to track process. So here's a bit of a free tool for you um, and a free tip. Uh, I don't know whether anyone's used something called Trello before. Uh, Trello is a, just gonna actually just open a new one up. There we go. Trello is a task list. Um, what I would recommend everyone does, and it's completely free by the way, a LinkedIn, um, let's call it mapping. Click my board. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to write a few columns. So, um, send connection, send request. Then I'm going to say connected, send message, arrange meeting, or archive. Really, really simple. Now you can get as complex with this as you want. I'm just going to shut that down. Um, so you can get as complex with this as, as you want. You can add 20 columns, but let's just keep it simple. Um, secondly, what uh, you need to do is use Google Chrome, and you want to sorry, just take that off, and you want to download the Chrome plugin for Trello. Is this little box up here? Again, completely free. You can probably get it straight through um, uh, the Trello when you sign up. If not, just Google Trello Chrome and it'll pop up. So what do we do? Let's have a look. Let's just go on to someone. Let me go on to Megan. There we go. So we've got Megan here. Now, I want to send her a connection request. So what I'm going to do, bear in mind, that's there. I'm just going to move that for a second. I'm going to say... We call it LinkedIn something. It's we call it LinkedIn mapping. There we go. LinkedIn mapping. Okay. And it might take a minute because I've just created this board. So there 
Give it a second. God, these things never, never work when it's live, do they? Hang on a minute. Uh, LinkedIn tracking. There we go. LinkedIn mapping. So, send request. Now, really important, click this little button here. Because it will then add her as a... Oh, that's really bad. Sorry, Megan. That will add Megan as a, uh, a, a connection onto my board. Watch what happens. Click add. And then I'm going to go back to my board. Look. Megan's in there. Awesome, huh? Um, then I can write some more information. I can write some comments. If I'm working in a team, I can add it to a team. And then all I do is I keep checking LinkedIn or when I get a, uh, an email saying, Megan's accepted my invite, and move on. And then I move her to that, and then I move her back. Really, really simple. And it's a great way of being able to track your network. Um, so that's, uh, that, that's kind of that, really. Um, we've got five minutes left, and I've got some questions coming through. Vanya, would you, uh, if you're still there and haven't fallen asleep, uh, I hope that, anyway, would you, would you, would you, would you like to? Would Certainly you not fallen asleep. <laughs> <laughs> that's good to hear. I think there's some, some questions here. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you, uh, yeah, do you want to run through those? Sorry, Darren. Um, I, I sorry, do, do, I, 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 sorry, I, sorry, apologies. I, I can run through some of these now, actually, if, if you want, or would you like to sort of read, read them out and uh, we, we can talk them through? Yeah, we can. So, um, I think you've addressed up until a point, and there's one here that I think that we didn't talk about. It said, if I currently have a basic LinkedIn profile, would the search be different? That was around the billion searches. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the search structure won't be different. What will be different is the amount of results that LinkedIn will, um, will serve up to you. Uh, and I think some of the other areas, you may not be able to search on, on, on some elements, but broadly speaking, the search is the same, the structure is the same, just the, uh, the results that get delivered are, are probably going to be less. Well, no, it will definitely be less. Okay. Thank you. Then uh, the other one is a compliment. It says, this has been amazing and great tips. Really appreciate the effort, Darren. Thanks to the EPA Africa Wirecard and Talents in the Cloud from Joy Marie. Thank you. Oh, that's uh, very kind. Thank you. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. Uh, the next question is, it says, I may have missed the answer, but should you ever pay for the premium LinkedIn account? Um, I think it depends on what your usage is and uh, what you want to get out of it. Uh, it's, it's like with all things, you know, free will get you so far. Uh, the minute you start paying, you start getting access to other tools and you know, certainly a much broader network. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. I think if, if, if people have the budgets to do so or they can approach their employers and say, look, I'm using this not to, not to search for a job. Um, I'm using this to you know, develop business or um, you know, build partnerships or build my profile because, you know, I want to represent um, – uh, you know, uh, Wirecard, whoever it may be, uh, you know, on the market, uh, I would be having those conversations with your uh, marketing departments or your CEOs or whoever else is, sort of holds the purse strings because I think it's, it's now becoming quite a, a critical business tool. Agreed. Thank you, Darren. Uh, the next question was, with Trello, you download the mm. app outside of LinkedIn and then link it. That was Joe Marie? Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really straightforward. So um, set up set up Trello. Um, uh, again, if you just go to Trello's um, website, I'll just show you quickly. Uh, Trello. Here we go. So literally just sign up. You've got a Google account. It makes it even easier. I think it's like three clicks. Um, and then it's, it's just a plug-in. So this is not scraping any data off LinkedIn. This is not breaching any of LinkedIn's terms and conditions, I can assure you of that. Um, all it's doing is, is taking a record and putting it into, into Trello. So um, yeah, but have a play with it. If you, if you do get stuck, um, this is applies to anyone on the, uh, on the call, feel free to drop me a line. Um, I'm happy to talk you through it or uh, maybe do another webinar if there's a load more questions. And then the last actual question is, is there a list of keywords to use in one's description of what you do, or use the persona app and then use those words? Is there a list of keywords to use in one's description of what you do? Hmm. I think there's probably, again, some commonality between have a standard 
in the description of what you do. But I, I, again, you know, it, it needs to be personal. Uh, it, it does need to have the keywords in there in terms of the audience you're looking to uh, to attract. Make sure things are spelt right because LinkedIn's algorithm doesn't pick, pick up uh, spelling errors. Um, but no, I, the, 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 I don't think there is a, a list somewhere. Um, it's really about knowing your audience. And by going through that persona exercise, you really will start to understand your audience a lot better. Great, thank you. And then Abigail asked if we would share the recording, and I believe you said you would do so. Absolutely. Um, might, might, might take me a day or so, but we'll, we'll certainly email it around. Lovely, thank you. And the, the other comment here was, great lessons, thanks. How do I link the company with which I have experience? How do you link the company? Ah, okay. Um, that's a good question. It's been a while since I've done that. I think if you um, let's edit my profile, let's have a look. Here we go. So if I edit uh, this, for example, and then I find the company here, so I'm, I'm not going to change that because um, it will change everything. But if, if I typed in the company there, say, for example, uh, Vanya, if, if you type in Wirecard here, um, that will come up with the Wirecard, uh, probably a list of options. You might have different sort of sub ones, but yeah, that's where you pick and that's where you associate which company you're working for. Lovely. So some advice I'd like to just give there is I've seen in some instances and people haven't paid a lot of attention when they started typing a company name there and they end up choosing a company that isn't in fact the company that they worked for and then you talk to them and you ask them about that employer and they go, oh no, I never worked there, but it's, it's just um, a level of care to be applied because it does sort of start searching for companies on the first couple of letters. So um, it's quite an important one. It is, definitely, yeah, for sure. Lovely. So those are the questions, Darren. Wonderful. Well, look, and thank, thank you so much, um, Wirecard EPA, for, for inviting me to, uh, to be on this web. I've really enjoyed it. I uh, quite like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> That's not being interrupted, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> um, but thank you. Thank you so much. And, and thank you to everyone who, who's joined today as well. It's, um, it's great to have so many people. And, uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll be sending out some, some emails with uh, the, the link to the deck and the recording. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Darren. It really has been incredibly insightful. Um, it's, it's really great to have been able to look at my own personal one, and I hope everybody has the opportunity now um, at the end of this webinar just to take a couple of minutes to have a look at their profiles and just have a think about how they could improve that. So thank you so much. Fantastic. If anyone wants to connect with me, feel free to do so, but make sure you send me a note. <laughs> otherwise, I can't who you are. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. We're, we're going to end the call now. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.